Once again, things are gearing up at SpaceX's South Texas launch facility, located just outside the village of Boca Chica, Texas. In recent weeks, the aerospace community has been abuzz with the new news of the stacking of the fourth super heavy prototype, BN4, and the SN20 Starship prototype both together, which resulted in the tallest rocket in the history of spaceflight. Since then, things have only ramped up some more. Brace yourself because in this video, we will be filling you in with all the latest news from the world of space. Together, the integrated Starship stood around 120 meters, 390 feet tall, while the addition of the orbital launch stand increased to 145 meters, 475 feet, which is taller than the Pyramid of Giza. The stacking was the first time that the Starship and Super Heavy were fully integrated, a major milestone for the company that puts them one step closer to making an orbital flight test. On August 6th, after a great deal of anticipation, SpaceX stacked the Starship on top of a Super Heavy booster for the first time ever, very briefly assembling the largest rocket in history. However, barely an hour after the two stage rockets were integrated and presumably latched together, SpaceX lifted SN20 off the booster, returned it to the transport stand and rolled the ship back to the building site later that day. Though an extreme sensitivity to wind conditions has delayed the procedures, Super Heavy Booster also appears to be on track to be removed from the orbital launch mount and sent back to the factory or to the suborbital launch mount that's been modified for booster testing. Starship's first full assembly was obviously just a fit check. Not long after the stacking milestone, Musk himself sketched out a few of the tasks still in front of the rocket. Namely, Musk says that SpaceX must still complete Starship S-20's partially finished heat shield, install some form of heat shield to protect Super Heavy Booster 4's 29 naked Raptor engines, finish installing, plumbing and activating 4 to 7 massive custom propellant storage tanks, and assemble, install and activate a giant mechanical umbilical arm on the launch tower to fuel and power Starship. All are undoubtedly crucial, and Starship is unlikely to launch before any of them are more or less complete. However, the booster and ship themselves are arguably far more of a pressure point. Because they can be deemed ready for flight, both the ship and the booster must complete unprecedented test campaigns on the ground. Ship 20 will need to complete cryogenic proof testing to verify that the first Starship and six Raptor engine mounts is structurally sound. SpaceX has already modified one of its two suborbital Starship launch mounts for that purpose. Once cryoproof and hydraulic RAM testing is complete, those six RAMs will likely be removed and six Raptor engines will be installed in their place, potentially setting up Ship 20 to become the first Starship prototype to static fire six engines and any number of Raptor vacuum engines. Super Heavy Booster 4 will be faced with an even more ambitious static fire test campaign as SpaceX likely gradually installs more and more engines. Depending on how focused SpaceX is on speed over thoroughness, this process could involve gradually adding two to five engines after every static fire or could result in SpaceX starting with four to nine engines and then immediately jumping from nine to a full 29 Raptor static fire. Only after completing those crucial qualification tests is SpaceX likely to stack Ship 20 and Booster 4 for a second time and enter the first true full stack Starship launch flow, hopefully culminating in the first orbital launch attempt later this year. But only as soon as the FAA completes an environmental review and approves the rocket's launch license. Technically, FAA approval could come next month or it could take the agency a year or more. It is almost impossible to predict without official information. However, given SpaceX's track record with the Starship prototype and Booster 3, it is likely that a flight-worthy Starship and Super Heavy will be stacked on the pad and ready to launch just a few months from now. Based on the flight plan SpaceX filed with the FCC back in May, the mission will see the booster element separate from the Starship approximately 120 seconds into flight. The booster will then perform a partial return and make a soft splashdown roughly 32 kilometers, 20 miles off the shore in the Gulf of Mexico. 
The Starship will then achieve orbit before performing a targeted soft splashdown about 100 kilometers off the coast of the Hawaiian island of Kauai. Based on previous statements, the flight is also likely to have a ceiling of 200 kilometers, 125 miles above sea level. If that test goes as planned, SpaceX will be ready to embark on its first commercial flights, which include a lunar flyby planned for 2023. This is all very interesting, but now we will tell you exactly how the Starship is any different than SpaceX's Falcon 9. Even though both vehicles have two stages that run on super chilled liquid fuels and have reusable first stage with legs and grid fins, at the heart they are quite different. At the heart of every rocket is a rocket's engine, or in this case, it's rocket engines. The Falcon 9, as the name suggests, has nine Merlin 1D engines on its first stage and a single vacuum optimized Merlin MVAC on the second stage. The Merlin engines used on Falcon 9 are open cycle, meaning they contain a small baby rocket engine called a gas generator. The exhaust for which is then used to spin the turbine that drives the main propellant pumps. However, with Starship development, SpaceX has cranked everything up to 11. In search of the best rocket engine ever made, they developed a full flow staged combustion cycle engine known as Raptor. The reason it is so complicated is that all of the exhaust gas that would normally be dumped overboard of spinning the turbine is instead rooted into the main combustion chamber and is used for thrust. Not only that, but there are two of those little rocket engines, each with their own turbines and pumps, the exhausts from which are pumped into the main combustion chamber. One of those fuel rich and other is oxygen rich. Having the fuel and the oxygen arrive in the combustion chamber as hot gas adds a huge boost in efficiency. While we are talking about engines, we should mention the fuels each engine runs on. The Falcon 9 runs on rocket grade kerosene known as RP-1 along with liquid oxygen, LOX, a combination often referred to as Kerolox, whereas Starship and its Raptor engines run on liquid methane and liquid oxygen otherwise known as methalox. Liquid methane burns cleaner than RP-1, leaving behind virtually no soot in the engines. It also has the potential to be more efficient, but is less dense than RP-1, which leads to slightly larger tanks by volume. The Merlin engine has a nutty thrust to weight ratio of around 200 to 1, while the Raptor is currently around 107 to 1 but increasing to 130 to 1, and again, Elon thinks they can get it to match the Merlin someday. Another huge upgrade for Starship is its massive payload bay. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy share the same fairing, which is about 5 meters wide and 14 meters tall, with a total usable volume of 145 cubic meters. Although there is an extended version coming soon that is taller and will get that volume closer to 200 cubic meters, but Starship's payload bay is a whopping 9 meters wide and 18 meters high with a usable volume of around 1000 cubic meters. Yep, that's more pressurized volume than a 747 and there will be an extended payload coming that is 22 meters in height. Now that we are talking about payloads, it has been said that Starship's first payload will be a wheel of cheese, just like SpaceX's first orbital flight dragon in 2010. We know Musk is a fan of following traditions. With that, we have come to the end of the video. Congrats on having such a great attention span. Let us know how excited you are about these new developments down in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.